What is bid leveling? You want the right contractor to do the work, not the lowest bid, because lowest bid almost never means lowest cost. So what is the process for bid leveling? What are some things to keep in mind to make it much easier? And what are some tips that you can follow that will save everybody some time? I hope you're ready for that content because we're gonna start right now. Bid leveling, or also known as a bid comparison or bid analysis, is a process that general contractors use to evaluate bids from multiple proposing trade partners. The purpose is to level these bids in a standard evaluation process to ensure fairness, consistency, and transparency. They're used to make sure that you're selecting the right trade partner. So let's go through the steps on how you can make this work for you, and I'm gonna give you some commentary on how you can make it remarkable and save everybody some time. So number one, receive the bids. Now, the key process here is to send out a request for proposal that is clear and concise and has any documentation that your trade partners might need in order to submit a bid to you. So your request for proposal should literally ask exactly for what you want. One of the biggest things here that I see that is a problem is when we send out the request for proposal, the RFP, we're not clear and so we get a bunch of different bids with different categories in different formats, with different focuses, with different context. And then guess what? When you have two different bids, whose job is it to merge those and interpret it? Yours. So I would typically make sure that you send out templates for how to break out the bid, for how to break out any alternates, for even just putting it in the right format so that the columns align so the project team's looking at the same thing. There's nothing wrong with sending out templates so the trade partners can put it in the right template the way you wanna see it. So the first step in this whole process is to receive the bids the right way. The second one is to review the bid documents and to make sure that as you go through there, all the information requested is there, that it meets the requirements as outlined in the RFP, that you have no additional questions, that everything has been filled out so that you have an understanding of what their bid is communicating and that they have captured all of the scopes in the tendering document. The bid should have all necessary information, pricing details, qualifications, and supporting documentation. If you have all of that, then you're good to go. One of the key things that I highly recommend, and this hasn't been done much, so I don't have an example that I can just link you to, but I get this question a lot. If everybody's competing against each other for lowest price or lowest bid, and lowest bid is never the lowest cost, then how do we work past that? The advice that I always give to trade partners is this. Go ahead and bid it for what the project is going to take according to normal standards of care in a professional way. And if you have a feeling like this is going to be more than what your competitors are proposing and that you're not gonna be the lowest bid, what I say is tell that story, right? This is what our bid is and other people's bids might be this and the delta, what they're missing, is going to be this. And then tell the story of, hey, the competitors are going to bid you this and then pick that back up with change orders. So if I was a trade partner, I would tell that story. But if I'm a general contractor or an owner doing bid leveling, I would find a way to make sure that that story is being told. Maybe you could say, what is your bid for this? And if you believe that your bid is higher than what's expected or your competitors, explain why and what the competitors would be missing. Or if your price is higher than expected, explain why or tell the story or provide context. You've got to give them a way to tell that story. Number three, normalizing bids. This is where having the right format is going to be absolutely key. So hopefully you've provided a template or at least guided them on what the format's going to be so that you don't have to waste a lot of time basically translating and interpreting all of these things. Normalizing bids means that you're able to compare them that the information is consistent. This involves adjusting bids to account for variations in scope, specifications, or pricing assumptions that allows you to compare apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. Again, any work that you would have to do later by yourself that will waste your time hopefully is picked up in a template and you can guide the trade partners to format it that way or break out their numbers in a way where you can compare apples to apples more easily once you receive and normalize these bids. Number four, evaluate the bid criteria. So you're gonna evaluate each one of these 
based on price, quantity, experience, schedule, and technical capabilities. The best thing for me, if this is a really, really critical scope and you don't already have a relationship with these folks, is to literally do a, an interview. So if it's the owner to the general contractor, they are going to probably interview you. But if you're a general contractor and you're doing this bid leveling with your trade partners, then you need to make sure that for the critical ones like mechanical, electrical, elevator, exterior, that you're actually interviewing them as well, getting a feel for their team and allowing them to explain the details of their bid. You're going to evaluate each bid based on a criteria in this step and it's key that the criteria is set ahead of time. And you might even communicate that to the trade partner actually, so that there isn't a surprise and it's, it's not just becoming like a confirmation bias. Like you're not just selecting who you want and then adjusting things to get there. You're actually taking real data and doing an evaluation based on real criteria. Number five, you want to score the bids with a grading criteria for each category that you pre-assign. So once you have those bids, you've normalized them and you understand what the criteria is, go ahead and give them a numerical score bid by bid. Number six, once you do the scoring, if you see inconsistencies or variances, this is an opportunity to dig in and make sure that you've identified that difference or that variance or the delta between the scoring properly, dig in, question your assumptions, make sure you have the correct story being told bid by bid, and that the number scoring, the evaluation criteria as it's scored is correct. Number seven, clarify any information if you need to, even if that means reaching out to your bidders, and make sure that any adjustments that might be needed are made to that scoring as you're about to select the contractor. Number eight, you're going to select the contractor and you're gonna make sure that everybody, including your selection team, understands that contractors are selected on price competitiveness, technical qualifications, past performance, and overall value for the money being given. So it's an overall selection process that must be fair. And if you're in a certain uh, contract type, especially government contracts, you will need to make sure everything you do is above the line. Well, you should do that anyway, but above the line and done accurately and double checked and that all information is precise enough so that it can be evaluated by whatever authority having jurisdiction to make sure that the bid was fair and competitive and everything was ethically done. Number nine, you'll notify the bidder and celebrate and then probably even ask them on their feedback for the bid process. Did you waste their time at all? Could we do it any better? Were there any difficulties, right? Get feedback on this process so that we can improve it going forward. Overall, the bid leveling process is really there to standardize it, to make sure it's consistent, to make sure it's transparent, but most importantly, that you're comparing apples to apples and you really know who's the best fit for this team. So again, some of the things that are typically not done, let's use the this YouTube channel as an example. If somebody's watching videos and they fail to hit that subscribe button, they won't get the other videos in the future, right? So these are problems that we need to avoid by making sure that we do like, we do subscribe, and we do comment to videos, right? So that's just an example. So some of the things that could go wrong with bid leveling is if you send out a vague RFP without clear expectations, you don't give them standard formats, then you get a whole bunch of different bids in different formats and you waste days and days and days and sometimes weeks interpreting and comparing this information and then just having to go back and ask clarifying questions for all of these different bidders. And then the other mistakes that you might have is not digging into the variances enough to make sure you have clear and complete information. And one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is to literally select the contractor based on lowest bid. Lowest bid is almost never lowest cost. I learned this from an owner in a construction company in British Columbia. He said, Jason, when you select lowest bid, you are incentivizing your contractor to spend the most minimal amount of time on your project as humanly possible. And you are not getting the value that you need. And so it forces people to deliver less. And a contractor is, and I hope you're listening to this, a contractor is not going to just accept a fee loss or a non-profitable job. So they're either going to give you their least experienced people or they are going to shortchange the time they're giving you, or they're going to cut corners with quality. So lowest bid is almost never, ever, ever a good thing. You really want to select it based on all of the criteria. So those are some things that can typically go wrong. If you follow my advice, you're going to save a lot of time. And I hope you're able to use this. We're going to turn this into a blog post with a checklist so you can use it. Check that out 
in the description below. And if you ever want any help or advice, reach out to us. We do this. We help clients with this consistently at Elevate Construction. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.